In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicott. To the Voondacast, the official podcast of Voondablog.com, the home of whatever. The podcast that knows that Green Lantern was actually there the entire time in Justice League. He was just just outside of Earth's atmosphere, actually fighting back Darkseid himself, all by himself, like a badass. No, he would have been fighting with the Green Lantern Corps. He's not going to do it by himself. No, he had to do it by himself. Yeah, it was just like the end of the Ryan Reynolds movie where only he alone <laughs> could save everyone in the universe. But everybody else was out in space blocking whatever, right? Okay, then he was, I don't out, remember. He was on the thin green line. I don't know. That's stupid. I am your host, <laughs> Steven. And with me today for a special, joyful Justice League episode Whoa. of the DCFU show. DC Forever Unlimited, not... Fuck you, DC. Because we would, but in like a passionate, sensual way. <laughs> like like lovers. Is the one, the only, the master of all knowledge that was just put out on the internet five minutes ago. Whoa. Mr. J. Hi, Mr. J. Hey, what's Mr. up, what's J. up? All right, all right. Now, before Justice League the film came out. Yes. I spent the first two days before it came out that like... Tuesday, Wednesday, before it was released. So nervous. My stomach in knots. Reading things about how supposedly garbled and, like, you know, tonally unbalanced the movie was and how bad the CGI looked and, like, all this, like, waves of criticism had me so nervous. And Mr. J was there to tell me, Steve, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. We're playing this just Yeah. Like you can believe in it. Yeah. And then upon after watching the film, <laughs> I was very pleased with the film. And Mr. J was the one pulling his hair out, freaking out about how things had turned out and how things are going to go for Warner Brothers down the road. We have we have switched sides <laughs> in the aisle here. I enjoyed the shit out of Justice League. And as a man who grew up watching Batman the Animated Series all the way till the in the Justice League Unlimited. It wasn't the film that I always dreamed the first Justice League movie could be, but it was enough of the film it it it, it had to be. And it had some pretty awesome moments in it. It had some pretty good moments, but you know, it was just like it was like an okay movie. Um it had some awesome stuff where I was like, What? So oh would my you God. say it's a C plus movie? B minus? Maybe B minus. B minus. I would go B plus. Well, Cinema and Score. B minus. According to Cinema Score, the audience gave it B plus. Whoa. But. So I am the Cinema Score. Yes. But. I'm down with the people. But that's not a great score. Why? Because I think that's the same score that Baywatch got. But with audiences. With audiences. Okay. Yeah. So that's not a great score to have. Okay, so... And, and Fifty Shades Darker. So you're saying that the system is rigged. So if B-plus is bad, then I need A-minus. <laughs> A-minus, yeah. <laughs> okay? Because it's good. Yeah. It's good, with a little minus. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay? What What are your initial initial reactions to the greatest Zack Snyder film Joss Whedon ever made? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it was better the <laughs> second time, because... The first time it was 
the CGI was really jarring. Mm -hmm. The CGI on Cavill's face, the first time I saw it was like, what the hell is going on with his face? I'm of the... I'm, I, I still want to watch it a third time. But the first time I watched it, I thought the only really horrendous CGI mustache was that initial first iPhone CGI mustache. But you saw beyond. You saw more. I mustache. actually thought that that one wasn't so bad because the whole footage was kind of crappy because it was like a cell phone footage. Yeah, but so it was a little bit harder to tell. What was really bad was the like the first post credit where they're erasing the flash. Yeah, that was also really bad. Because they close up on his face, and yeah. <laughs> his face looks like one of those uh, Conan yeah. O'Brien things where like he, he replaces like a person's face with his mouth. So, how do you want to react to this? Do you want to actually review the movie, or do you want to review like everything around the movie and then make your... Well, it sounds like we're already doing the bad, so let's just get the bad out of the way, and then we'll go to the good, okay. and then we'll so give just, it a score. So, just the movie. Okay. For the movie. This session. That, that, that's fine. So more bad? Is that what we're going to Doing all the bad first? Yeah, the CGI I was pretty bad. bad. Don't you think? I thought, I, I really, honestly, I only thought that one part was bad and m some moments where Steppenwolf was in like a lot of action. Like when he had to move really fast or like, like when he was chasing the Amazons and stuff. Like, there were some of those CGI moments that I thought didn't look as finished as they could. Like, when he's running and jumping, it, it there's no weight to it. It's not like a real person, like, jumping. It's well, just but he's not like a real a person. He's a fucking new god. Yeah, but they should have they should have mo-capped it. for him. Yeah, but they should have mo-capped it. Like, that's why Caesar looks so amazing. You don't amazing. got time to hire Andy Serkis? Yeah. You got four months of rest <laughs> this movie. What are you talking about? That's why, um... You know, that movie looks so good because it's Andy Serkis actually moving around. So, like, Caesar actually looks, like, real. Where Steppenwolf just looks like a cartoon character jumping around because, like, it's not, like, a real movement. God damn it, Ciara and Hines. Why can't you jump 80 feet down yeah. into the center of this Themyscira temple? What's yeah. wrong with you? Not a dedicated actor. Get the fuck out of here. And you know what was weird, too, was, like, like the mother boxes. Aren't the mother boxes supposed to create the boom tubes in the original jack kirby mythology yeah you don't need no fucking three mother boxes to terraform no planet obviously dark side just has to show up with his armies to fucking you know do the work and like enslave you and make you do it you know what i mean if you want a fire pit you gotta get the you gotta slave the entire world and make them dig that shit and light it up the mother boxes in the original uh, Jack Kirby, from what I understand, were just used for, like, communicate. Like, they were, like, cell phones. Yeah, communicating. So they could talk, and so they could transport in between anywhere in the universe that yes. they wanted to go. So they pretty much effed Jack Kirby. Well, you could have, like, you know, story-wise, you could still make them do that. Like, he did talk to the mother box, hypothetically, right? Yeah. And the way they made it seem was that, like, the mother box was... Calling him? Communicating with Darkseid. Is the way they played it. Like, originally... Like, I liked it originally, because originally... It seemed like the mother box was creating the boom tube, because he... Yeah. At, he appeared where the mother the box, box was. was. And then he... And then, at the end of the movie, Darkseid just pulled him out whenever he wanted. And then... That's what molested were. When he showed up in Atlantis... It seemed like he showed up right where the, the mother, mother box, box was. was. Yeah. So why did he know exactly where the mother boxes were in those spots, but not when they're at the cyborg's apartment? Exactly. Is it because the parademons found them? First? Or or did cyborg's like, father like how the fuck did a parademon like swim underwater and get to Atlantis without anybody noticing his ass and be like that's where the mother box is? Now see if you start looking hard at this movie, we're gonna find some glaring plot holes. So you think but, that he sent out the parademons to find the boxes, and then he appeared? Well, that's what it seemed like was going on. Like Because Batman what, says, oh, this is a scout. Unless Batman's wrong, which has never happened in film history. Except for in the last movie, when there was a fraction of a chance Superman... But remember that, remember that weird sound? 
like the like that alarm kind of sound. I don't know if that because usually like I would have thought that that would have been the mother box pinging. Oh, yeah, pinging for him. For the parademons or Steppenwolf or whatever, for yeah. whoever's looking for it. But um, it's weird. Like they didn't explain like where is that alarm sound. Remember in the beginning, there you hear that alarm sound, mm-hmm. right? Am I right? Mm-hmm. Like where yeah, the hell yeah, is it coming yeah. from? Yeah, it's coming from inside weird. the parademon. I, it's inside of him. It's his like self destruct thing. I thought, wasn't it? No, because remember Batman. That's how he gets the parademons to chase him by playing that sound. So I would have thought that that would be the sound that the mother box makes. But maybe that's just a parademon like frequency of like communication that Batman is picking up. On. I don't know. We can't dissect this movie because it gets kind of <laughs> what what Whoa, the we're fuck? starting to find holes <laughs> in, 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 below the surface. No, there were no holes. Whoa! Just a gl- okay. big old glory. Now, hole. once you can see that the mother boxes are not mother boxes as we know them, but that mother boxes are used to conquer worlds, terraform worlds, okay? Once we establish that conceit, and we establish that Seven Wolf is a big CGI alien who does not need to obey any laws of physics ever, then we can enjoy the movie, right? Um... <clears throat> the other thing that makes no sense was like, okay, the first, the first mother box, um, was in Themyscira. Correct. The second one was in Atlantis. Correct. The third was in Gotham. That's not true. Originally, they said that it was like somewhere in Britain or some shit. And they dug oh, it in up. World, yeah, in World War One. They dug it up in World War Two. But. Um, in this universe, Victor Stone lives in Gotham. No, I know, yeah, but they moved it. Yeah, they moved but it. The, the but I'm just saying, in the movie, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. the yes. mother box is in, Gotham. is in Gotham. Yeah. So, why the hell is Steppenwolf in the middle of some little tiny Russian country in a nuclear power plant? Well, I, I, well from what I, what I gathered from the film was that the nuclear reactor, the abandoned nuclear reactor shell or whatever that he was in, was like shielding him from from people noticing. So that's why Batman had a hard time finding him. But why would he him. be scared of somebody finding him when he's a freaking god? Because he doesn't have all his parademons army like there. Like he doesn't have a full army. He doesn't have everything he needs. Like he's trying to like he's basically okay. The conceit of the movie is that Seven Wolf he tried to conquer the world once already. Yeah. He tried the big showy way that hypothetically Darkseid conquers worlds where he just fucking opens a boom tube and he just fucking starts raining down death upon everybody. But Earth united and they fought him back. Yeah. So now Steppenwolf is like, hmm, I'm gonna win Earth the sneaky way. So that's why he's being sneaky. That's why he's not making like a big show of it because he doesn't want to attract maybe Green Lantern attention. And all that other stuff. So, well, that's the other thing that I don't understand. Because, like, in the trailer it says... No um, lanterns here? No lanterns here. So where the, are the lanterns? Well, maybe that's why Josh cut it out of the movie. You think maybe there was a lantern in the movie? No, I think Josh cut it out of the movie because there has to be a lantern in Sector 2814. That's what I'm saying. There's always a lantern in 2014. How is there not a lantern right now? There's no lantern here on Earth, maybe specifically. Maybe just meant like, there's no lantern in this room where I'm filming, talking to you. <laughs> maybe Hal Jordan was in another adventure at the time? It's possible. It's unknown. It's, it's, you can't speculate on what was in a trailer and not in the movie. Okay, and here's the other thing. Was no Kryptonians, right? But Superman's only been around... For 30 years, he could have attacked at any other point before. Was there another Kryptonian? Well, maybe he knew there was Kryptonians. And more, hypothetically, wasn't Zod floating out in space on a ship? Like, they know that Krypton exploded. And they know that some Krypton people es- escaped. Kryptonians escaped. I don't know. Well, now, you people 
people heard rumors that Superman was on it. No, but I'm saying like, um, okay, Superman's only been around for 30 years. I got you, but there's Kryptonian technology on the planet. Crashed in the planet. We got a down ship in the middle of the fucking Indian Ocean. Okay, but Crypto- the ship the ship was still there. Okay, after that's he died. fine. But if you're coming to a world and they got a fucking crashed fucking uh, if they got a tank in the drive crashed in the driveway, you're gonna be like, hey, where are the soldiers at? You know, there's a crashed Krypton- Kryptonian ship that you could see sitting in the middle of the fucking Indian Ocean. You'd ask yourself, where the fuck are the Kryptonians? See, this is where I think the ultimate... Oh, you're asking questions about the, the, the things that aren't in the movie. But see, this is why I think the ultimate edition of, like, Batman versus Superman no. would have been good. Because, like, no. you know, there's that scene where Lex no. is communicating. No. But you saw the ultimate edition, right? I saw the entire So ultimate what happens in that part. scene? He talks to Steppenwolf, right? Not really. He's kind of just learning about... The new oh, God. it's just a recording of Steppenwolf? He's just, like, learning... Yeah, he's just, like, learning about the New God's history. See, it would have made sense if, like... He, Luthor summoned him. If Luthor summoned Steppenwolf well, and was like, Yo, there ain't no Kryptonians well, here. The implication Come might be that when Luthor was fucking with the ship, he might have sent out some sort of... Signal. You know, signal or something without noticing it or doing it on purpose. You don't know what happens when you do, like... Because Luthor did something he wasn't supposed to do. One of the plot points of creating Doomsday was that Kryptonians had, you know, uh, outlawed um, this procedure that he was doing to create Doomsday. And he asked the computer, he said, where is the Kryptonian High Council to, uh, to you know, to, stop to debate, to stop me? And they're like, well, they're all dead. And then he's like, all right, then do it. Maybe one of, like, the procedures on that is, like, well, I'm going to do it anyway, but I'm going to, like, send out this little alert beacon, like, stay off this fucking planet. We got a Kryptonian menace up in this bitch. The other thing is that it implies... What? You're fucking... Wait, wait. None of this shit's in the movie! The other thing implies is that Doomsday's been created before, but I thought the whole point was that because he mixes human blood... It was different. That's why... No, no. He created Doomsday? No. He was, uh... He was replicating how they do it. Bringing somebody back to life makes Doomsday? <laughs> yeah, putting them in the tank, in the revitalization tank. Yeah. Adding electricals, boogly booglies, right? <laughs> and then doing Krypton magic, you get it. You get Doomsday. Because I, re- I specifically remember the little machine saying, like, oh, like, because he, when, after you he mixes foreign his blood, genetic material. Foreign genetic material. You need some foreign genetic material for it to mix with. So maybe the Kryptonians, they had some foreign, there's some other people out there that they, they grabbed. They can get and... some foreign genetic, they can travel through space, they can get foreign genetic <laughs> material wherever you want. Okay, okay. I can walk into a bar right now and get foreign genetic material from any guy I want. Ew. <laughs> Gross. Wait, that's not really, not the way I want it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll lower your face. Or did it. <laughs> but you're... Critiquing things that aren't in the movie. Okay, 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 okay. You can't... Even the Ultimate Cut doesn't even actually really exist. Okay? Okay. It exists only in a Blu-ray. In Zack Snyder's heart. Okay. Okay? <laughs> okay. And the Ultimate Cut of BBS, I like the theatrical cut better than the Ultimate Cut. I don't know about the Snyder purists who like the Ultimate Cut. I'm not a fan of it. I think it wastes a lot of time. <laughs> okay? Yeah. A, there's like... There's like a whole section in the Ultimate Cut where... After the the capital blows up, Superman is depressed, and he like they like show like two random Indians on a mountain, and the Indians are like, what? "How the fuck did that guy get up here?" Or whatever, and it's Superman who's like walking up the mountain, who's like walking like by the mountain, but he doesn't have any supplies with him. So they're like, "Wow, that guy must be here to die. That guy doesn't have any supplies." <laughs> guy, no. These Indians just like talk about how Superman's crazy. <laughs> And then Superman goes around, and he walks, and he has a vision with his dad, and his dad tells him stuff. But that was that vision part was in the yeah, movie. it was in the movie. But in the in the ultimate cut, it's like yeah, you didn't four need or to five see minutes. The Indians. It's like six minutes in the oh, movie. Oh, it's longer. It's long as fuck in the movie. <laughs> the ultimate cut, this shit's super long. <laughs> and then ultimately, his dad's like like so it's the same shit. Like, bro, go save people, bro. Come on. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. What are you doing? Like, come on. All right, all right. Let's go back to Justice. Now back the to Justice one. Now. Okay, back to Justice League. What, wait, wait, what were you going to say? What were you going to say? The one thing that the I Ultimate read... Cut? No. No. The supposed 
the the material that people say was in the movie in earlier cuts that got cut out of the movie that has been recorded the the stuff that's in people's non-disclosure agreements right which is there's uh stuff that hints back to man of steel that sets up this movie like for example supposedly the reason why they're able to resurrect superman is because they find the codex that was put in superman's dna at the beginning of uh man of steel which really like they said it was like the future of the krypton people but like they didn't really explain how you know how it is so it kind of maybe explains what the codex is which i guess is like a krypton like extra life like is that what it is it's an extra life power I, th- I think so you can like you know come back so that the I think people was, will never die. Like, is that I what think it that is? part of the movie was a little bit midi chlorians. We just kind of forget about it, so we let it go. But see, they were going to bring it back, and they were going to make it count. They were going to bring back the codex, and then the other thing they were going to bring back that I thought was actually pretty cool was they were going to have uh, Martha come back and talk to Superman when he's all fucked up and doesn't know who he is when they resurrect Superman. Spoilers for this entire podcast. <laughs> The resurrect Superman, Martha's supposed to tell him, like, uh, he's supposed to be like, oh, there's too many voices, I can't even think, blah, blah, blah. She's supposed to give him, like, that, think of yourself as an island, and the voices are getting far oh. away, and they're supposed to come back and do that over again. It's supposed to come full I think circle. That, I think that would have made more sense than just, like, um, Lois Lane appearing out of nowhere and calming him down. She was not appearing out of nowhere. Lois Lane <laughs> was appearing... Was summoned by Batman. Was summoned by Batman, because Batman... Got the big guns. He did Barry Allen's advice in BBS DOJ, and he told her Lois is the key. Now, if Batman was still in a Batman v Superman mindset when he resurrected Superman and Superman wasn't nice, he might have dropped a nuke on him and killed everybody. Whoa. But since Flash went back in time and said Lois Lane is the key, Batman's like, shit. Like the beginning of the movie said, Superman loves vagina. I, what, that was in the beginning of the movie? Yeah, didn't you interpret that in the beginning of the movie? What? When a little boy asked Superman, what's the best thing on earth? Oh, and Superman I'm looks late. at <laughs> super, super, Superman looks at him silently and smiles. Oh. He's thinking about Lois Lane, about love, about sweet mother, about ladies, banging? ladies. Whoa. Maybe that's why Darkseid wants to come to the world. He's, he's on there. See, I... I could have written a better ending to Justice League movie. Wait, other things that were weird. Okay. The the Nightcrawler scene. Um, they're trying to, like, crawl up the, the tunnel. Okay. Um, he didn't have a sword. It stalls. He didn't have a sword. What? All he had was a Nightcrawler. So that's what he had to use. Batman. You mean a sword? He said, that's what he says in the movie. What? That I don't have a sword? That's what he says in the movie. What he uses the Nightcrawler? He says, I didn't bring my sword. And then he has that shit. Well, what I was saying... I was thinking a joke, George. You just killed my comedic momentum here. Way to go. So what I was saying about the Nightcrawler scene is like, Cyborg just leaves them in the hole, and then they cut to the, everybody being outside, and like, I have no idea what just happened. Well, you should have paid attention during that part of the movie, okay? They no, fight they... under there. Aquaman There's a whole scene holds back there. the water. Yes. Aquaman holds back the water. They start climbing up the night. <coughs> and then we'll go do stuff. Whatever. Who cares? And then Cyborg, all of a sudden... Who cares? Wait, Cyborg Who just... Cares? Hold on. Why do you care? Cyborg, out of nowhere, because these are the jarring cuts. Why? Because of the forced two-hour... I didn't hour... even notice. Yes. Because of the forced two-hour runtime, there's a bunch of, like, cut scenes... That just, like, don't make any sense. Like, Cyborg, out of nowhere, just leaves the team hanging from the Nightcrawler. And he's like, oh, I gotta go get the Mother Box right now. Because they know Steppenwolf's after it. And he left it unguarded. But, yeah, but then all of a sudden, like, the Justice League is out of the hole. And, like, you have no idea what just happened. Like, it's you a feel jump like cut. A... It's a jump cut. Yeah, that sucks. Aquaman jumps, dr- dr- stops all the water from coming... Thus eliminating all the peril. Thus, we can have a jump cut to the next moment that matters in this movie. They just um, crawled out of there. I like jump cuts. Yes, they got out. Because Aquaman can stop water with his fucking powers. 
Apparently. But then how did how did Aquaman get out? Did he just jump out of the hole? He can swim. He could make a little fucking bubble tube. He could have made a fucking <laughs> water elevator to take fucking everybody out if he really wanted to. But it doesn't matter because it's just logistical bullshit. What matters is that Batman got everyone together. Batman was a good role model to everybody. Batman got all bruised and fucked up. He got all suicidal and dark. I also thought that that scene you were talking about with Superman and the cornfield, Mm -hmm. it was super jarring because there's parts of that scene where he has normal face, and there's also parts of that scene where he has CGI mustache face. That's because they shot some of it before. Well, they shot the whole thing before. No, they shot the thing before, but the... They replaced some parts of it. Yeah, but supposedly he's supposed to get, like, like, civilians are supposed to come and, like, start talking to him, and he's supposed to, like freak out on them and stuff and then Martha shows up like it's supposed to be like a longer more involved sequence it's a little jarring when like if the whole scene is CGI face it's a le- little bit easier than um I didn't even not not even notice these things I was too involved in the story to even notice these logistical <laughs> inaccuracies um but there's not there's not a whole lot to the story Okay. There is a lot to the story. There is a lot to the story. No, it's pretty much. There is let's get these three boxes. A lot. Let's combine them. No, the world is really, really sad because Superman is gone. Yeah. And there is no hope left. So much so that random dudes want to blow up four blocks of civilians in Paris. So Wonder Woman has to stop them. And she only has like twenty seconds to do it. Yeah, but that has nothing Boom. to do with the plot of the movie. That's a lot of fucking plot right there. That has nothing to do with the plot of the movie, That's though. to set up that the world is hopeless. And that he's not a believer. But guess what Wonder Woman is? I'm a believer. Whoa. That was the worst one-liner in the whole movie, though. Right? Maybe. Right? Yeah. I can't believe it. What are you? Well, the other thing it. is, why would she use her, like, super bracelets on a bank robber? Wouldn't she fucking kill the guy? Vaporize him? Why would she vaporize him? How could she vaporize him? Using her super bracelets, that fucking oh, like a team. She doesn't do that. She does. No. She does. Yeah, Look at the movie can, again. But she can control how much happens, right? She almost killed her aunt doing that. Yeah, but she can't. And her aunt is super human. <coughs> yeah, but now she knows how to control her powers. Did she do that? No, she didn't do that. Yes. And they just see that's another jump yeah. cut because she goes like this and they cut, so you don't see. Remember in the trailer, you see the bank from the outside explode. I think that was Wonder Woman. Who blows up the bank? I think she blows up the bank. No. Dude, you're... <laughs> see, this is the problem. George switched sides and now he's negative. That's the Snyder He went version. evil. George is rogue. George might have been taken over by a parademon. And he's just transforming right now. Listen, the second time I watched the movie, because I already, I already knew like all the flaws, I was able to just like enjoy it more. And there's a lot of stuff that's enjoyable. We can talk now about the good stuff. Can we? I love the Flash. Wait, there's one more bad thing to talk about. Okay. The brunch? No, that was a good moment. <laughs> that was fun. No, the air bubble underwater. Oh, the like, air you bubble. You can talk? Yeah. Why the fuck do you need an air bubble to talk? But maybe it was just for that one scene. Well, they, James Wan said that people don't need air bubbles in his movie to talk. Yeah. So maybe they'll explain why that particular section of Atlantis, you need an air bubble to talk. Maybe they, like, made it so that, like, the water is, like, regular so that, like, you know, Steppenwolf would be harder for him to get it, maybe? maybe. Or maybe Aquaman's not used to talking maybe. underwater? We need to fix this with retconning, guys. Steven. Is what I'm saying. But maybe, maybe it's because she knows that, like, Aquaman's not used to, like, talking underwater. Okay, I guess. Because he kind of keeps to himself, so maybe, maybe he was like, oh, let me make it easy for you. And create an air bubble. Dumb, beautiful bastard. But I thought her superpower was really cool, controlling yeah. the water. Yeah, when she started fighting with her powers, I flipped. That was like the one of the biggest, like, oh my god, we're in a DC movie now. Mera yeah. is fucking throwing around parademons, like, what's up? Like, at first, I thought she was just gonna be, like, some dumb cameo and say some stupid shit, but she actually got to use her powers. It's awesome. It's interesting how they were gonna have so many, like, girlfriends in this movie, and then they, like, held back. Isn't that weird? No, I, you know, actually, after, they were gonna put Iris in the movie. But after seeing the and movie, Mira. but after seeing the movie, yeah. I'm glad they kept Mira, 
and they cut Iris. Iris. Yeah, she's boring. Because Iris doesn't... What is she going to contribute? She doesn't have powers. She just contributes to the Flash, like, isn't the chicks. (laughs) Yeah, but then if he has a girlfriend, (coughs) like... It does, the movie doesn't make sense because well, the, what the whole showed, thing is that well, he's oh isolated. I have no friends. Yeah, well, what, well, he wasn't gonna get a girlfriend by the end of the movie. He was just gonna make a friend, I think, by the end of the movie. Mm. I liked it better that he was like solitary, and then in the Flash movie, then you can introduce Iris, and then he gets a girlfriend. Okay, now the good of this film. The good. The good. I like the Flash. You don't like the Flash? I like the Flash. I love the Flash. I thought it was really great. I love his superpowers. I love the little Flash theme that Danny Elfman does. It sounds a little bit like the CW theme, but I, I thought it was awesome. Danny Elfman's theme was really good all over. I thought it's the the was Batman really theme. Good. His whole his whole Justice League you know team theme. I think it's called Justice League. Uh, I think it's called Justice League Unite in the no. I think it was soundtrack or something. Heroes theme. Heroes Unite or something. Heroes theme. Yeah. Whatever. Like, so I like the theme in the soundtrack. But then, like, during the movie, it didn't really, like, stand out or pop out to me. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, during the movie, there's three themes that really stand out that I can really tell and hear. Mm-hmm. There's the Batman theme, which is, I like that he kind of, like, remixed it a little bit, but he doesn't play it enough. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, he plays a couple bars of it and then lets it go, yeah. and he plays it in a darker version. Yeah, yeah. And he, and he also stole the John Williams theme but made it dark. That was, was kind of cool, cool, really cool hearing really it cool. in a different theme. Um, I think he used a little bit of the Man of Steel during that part where they first get into the, the Kryptonian ship. Yeah. He, they played a little bit of Man of Steel there. But, um, like, I don't know. If you're gonna, they played Wonder Woman theme when she fought. Yeah. But the, the one thing I didn't like about the Wonder Woman, one, though, was instead of... Because the original one was like an electric cello. Almost sounds like an electric guitar, but yeah. in this version, it was more orchestral, <coughs> um, which is okay, but it kind of takes away like that the cool, old, weird old. sound to it. Yeah. Um, but if you're going to do the Batman theme, why not just like, just go for it? Just go for it. But instead of, but instead of doing, dun, 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 like just playing a couple no. notes. Yeah, it's kind of like no. that. So you're, he didn't do enough of doing rehashing old bullshit. No, no, I'm just saying if you if you don't want to use Hans Zimmer's no. Batman theme no. from BVS, no, I think the way they just go full it, Batman. No, but you can't go full Batman. You can't. You can't. It would have it would have been too shocking for everybody. I think just making it an Easter egg for people that know, doing a few bars here and there, that's the way to go. I also thought like when Superman comes back, not when not when Clark Kent comes back. Like, you know, he's in his, like, at the end, when he's in a Superman suit, you gotta go full Man of Steel on that one. All you got is fucking critiques for this fucking movie, Jeff. No. You, no, I'm not critiquing. You can be in the Legion of Doom. I'm not critiquing. They would call you no. the critiquer. Okay? you be the critic. The mad critic. It was fun. Okay, Aquaman fucking whooped so much ass. Aquaman All was right. awesome. The one thing I was hoping, I was hoping we'd see him, you'd see him, like, you know, ride a shark or talk to fish or something, but they're saving he it for that. Aquaman movie. They're That's all right. saving that for Aquaman movie. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. But he was really tough. He was really fun. He worked. The Flash worked. Cyborg Wait, one more worked thing. for the movie. One more thing. Why is the mother box only being guarded by two Atlantean guards? There were, like, six Atlantean guards. And Mera. Who's like a high sorceress? There were six guards. There was at least I only four remember to six two. guards. I remember like six or eight guards. I remember two and then Mira. It's not just two guys. <laughs> just two There's guys, at least bro. Six guys there. I don't know. There's at least six dudes. Yeah. Okay. So now that you're wrong. Okay. Now that George is wrong about one point of the movie, he's wrong about everything. Just like it was a great film. The best moment of the movie for me was, like, the moment I got most excited for, as a Green Lantern fan, obviously, was the flashback to the olden times fight where we got to see a couple Green Lanterns fighting alongside of the armies of Atlantis. And and it was freaking Themyscira awesome. We got to see Zeus. Greek gods whipping out lightning bolts for everyone. And, you know, Ares was there. 
and Artemis. Supposedly in the original cut, they have all... Antiope has lines with Ares and Zeus and the Green Lantern. And Hippolyta. You know, I didn't notice Antiope in that <coughs> in that old I, I couldn't, scene. I couldn't see her either, but she's supposed to be in there. Yeah. They, sh- they shot her. Originally, have footage of it. I think I saw Hippolyta, but not Antiope. Um... That was like the most exciting part of the movie for me. If that and Lord of the Rings battle, that's how I thought the movie was gonna open. Like when I originally saw the the trailers and stuff, like I thought that's how you open the movie with the old school fight. But they wanted to make it more. Well, yeah, I would have liked to more see new school. I would have liked to see more of the old school fight. That was dope, and um, I thought the first time that Steppenwolf comes in in the movie, I think that's against the Themyscira. Yeah. And I thought that scene was super cool, seeing all the Amazons working together and chopping down trees. And, uh... Yeah. Do you think those Amazons that were making the cave-in happen? What? That they instant... The oh, Amazon, you think they died? That's what I'm asking. Do you think they instantaneously died by caving in? Like, they were suicide kamikaze Amazons? Or do you think they had enough time to, like, roll into the next section to, like, fight and then die? And then he pushes through. Well, the the building itself doesn't collapse, so why maybe they're just trapped inside, and then somebody can just let them out. So they all die. But at least, uh, what's her name? Is it Manelope? It's kind of hard to. Whatever. Remember Antiope's Amazon. girlfriend? Meh. No. <laughs> that was scary. Okay. I don't have a name for her. Just say what I think her name was her. Manelope. Who cares what her name is? And if Philippus. it's Penelope, Manelope, <laughs> Womanelope, no one cares. Just what, what? What was the moment? She's in there. I didn't even notice it was her. Yeah, I didn't and even notice it was her. And and uh, Philippus, the stop saying character names. No one cares about the Black Amazonian girl. <laughs> but it was cool that they, you know, they brought them over from Wonder Woman. But it was jarring at the same time because, like, in Wonder Woman, there were, um, Philippus was, like, fully clothed, and in this movie, she's, like, in a bikini. <laughs> so I was like, whoa, I can see her belly button. <laughs> TMI. TMI. Uh, but I thought that scene was cool. Like, all the action with the Amazons was cool. They were, they were doing all these cool tricks and flipping over and grabbing the box and... The last shot... Of the Justice League after they defeat Steppenwolf was awesome. Where they're standing on like the building, oh. looking around, and everything changing around them. That was a great shot. The uh, like basically, I thought a lot of people were ripping on the Batman jokes in the movie, and I thought all the Batman jokes worked so well. I thought they were so perfect. Uh, I don't remember any of them being bad. Um, I. Yeah, I thought I'm rich. That was funny, and uh, I I don't not don't like you. Yeah, that's a great. I like, thought that was you know, awkward. Like, yeah, you know, we, we I could see friends. Batman saying that. I could see Batman saying that. Was it was it too Lego Batman when he said that? Is that something Lego Batman would do? <laughs> well, Lego Batman's Batman. Yeah. What the fuck. Okay. Lego Batman's Batman. Come on. I thought it was good. I thought it was good. Lego Batman's Batman. Um, I thought Flash probably had the funnier moments. But because he had more comedy, he also had more of the, like the uh, some some stuff that didn't land. But um, I thought he was the funniest character. I like the thing where you know. But they gave away a lot of his best jokes in the trailer, like when he's like, "Oh, um, I know you guys are ready for battle, but I just kind of push some people and run." <laughs> that was a good theater moment. Yeah. yeah. They had to use it to sell the movie. Sell the movie. I still think the best moment he had was the one where you know. You see Superman saving a whole building, and he's just like pushing a car. Yeah, he's, he's, he's pushing guy. a car, and then like, uh, that Superman that's a saves one. a whole building. <laughs> and what's sad too is that like that scene, I could totally tell is all all Whedon, all done after the fact. Supposedly, that whole Russian family was all Whedon. Whedon adding you know peril to the end of the movie, and it's amazing how Joss Whedon in that one scene did more for Superman in 40 <laughs> seconds to say who Superman is in 40 seconds than he is than 
than Zack Snyder did in the entirety of Man of Steel. See, I disagree with people because they people are always saying, oh, well, Superman's never shown to be heroic in those movies. He is, but <coughs> it's like in a more downer way. Like when he saves the little girls from the burning building and stuff, but they play the sad music and Superman's kind of like sad and everybody looks sad in their face. Mm -hmm. So people don't remember it as a heroic moment, but he does heroic shit in the Snyder no, stuff. Yeah, yeah, he does. And then when he saves the people, he does. But I'm saying from the flood. But that's that's like that image of Superman carrying an entire building and being happy and stuff. full of people away to safety, and somebody looking at that and smiling. Yeah, that says more about Superman than Superman fucking. Looking at the sky really hard and then like flying through the air. like that says more about Superman. That tells more of a story about who Superman is and what he thinks than. But the only difference than, than, than him freaking out on an oil rig and like saving a bunch of people and then like passing out like that. That was so Superman. You just want to see him save people while smiling and cracking jokes. No, no. I just want to see him. Saving people is a serious job. I'm just down for him for the to Snyderverse. Say that he's into truth and some justice. And, that's some, and some happiness. Some justice. Yeah, but he's. Sa I'm just saying, he saves people in the Snyder movies, but it's just not with him smiling and cracking jokes. I'm not saying he jokes. doesn't. I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm just saying that Joss Whedon did more in 40 seconds than Zack Snyder could do in two and a half hours. But why? Because he's smiling and cracking jokes? No! Because of how you're visually telling the story. It's because of how you're visually building the story. It's just about seeing Superman in the distance. It's not even a close-up of Superman carrying a building. It's Superman, from Flash's perspective, carrying the building. He's a little CGI dot carrying yeah. a building. And that says more about Superman. Okay? It looks goofy as fuck, alright? But if in BVS... They had footage on the news of Superman carrying buildings full of people away from danger. That would have told a hell of a fucking story. But he went into a, or why Superman's cool. But he went into a burning building and saved a little girl. That's great. You and did that. And he saved people from a flood. That's great that you did that, Superman. And he saved a rocket. That's great that you did that, Superman. But the way Joss, but the way Zack Snyder shot that shit, like you said, made it look really depressing. <laughs> <laughs> and like he didn't want to do it because and the way Joss Whedon did it, made it, it made look, it look like fun. Superman does this shit all the time. He doesn't give a fuck. He's just doing his job. Like all I'm trying to do is give credit to Justice League for <laughs> making a better Superman moment in 40 seconds with a CGI dot than Zack Snyder did in Man of Steel with two and a half hours and 150 million dollars. Yeah, but I, I get what Snyder was going for. Like, I get what he was going saving for. Saving people is serious business. But it didn't work. Cops like, don't crack but jokes. it didn't work. Cops, they do serious business. It didn't work. Monday nights on Radiate.fm. You can tune in to the show of shows. The only podcast on this radio network. The only place to hear voices as sensual and seductive as Mr. J's. We're gonna beat evil's might with my green lantern light. <laughs> that is pure magic. Incarnate. Don't you want to hear that? Every Monday night at 8 o'clock on the radioactive underground, radiate.fm, you have to tune in when we have the DCFU podcast. One of our many shows on the Blizzard Cast podcast. Whoa. We talk about Justice League a lot. We're going to talk about the all future sorts of comic of books. DC. We're going to talk about movies. We're going to talk about Ninja Turtles. We're going to talk about Spider Man. We might get Whoa. some time to talk about Infinity War. Maybe. 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 Some more DC news. We're going to talk about Brian Michael Bendis going to DC. We're going to talk Shazam. About, maybe I'll get Mr. J's review of Doomsday. Is it Doomsday Clock? Yeah, Doomsday Clock. You got it. Sounds so, sounds so, sounds so undramatic. <gasps> is Doomsday going to show up? <gasps> oh my god. Is he the Doomsday Clock? Is that the end of Doomsday Clock? <laughs> is that Doomsday fights Dr. Manhattan and kills him? Oh, no. I agree that name. Dr. Manhattan, he's so powerful, he could just blow you up from the inside out. Yeah, but Doomsday beats Superman. It can't be Manhattan. It 
Nobody can be Manhattan. Hit them with a spike. Manhattan can alter reality. Yeah, but Doomsday can alter your face. Comic book sales. <laughs> no, he can alter comic book sales. Okay. Because yeah. that Superman, Death of Superman issue, you could print, you know, like 16 million copies of it. But besides, and people would still buy it. But besides that one comic, Doomsday's never had another good storyline. What the Doomsday virus? That wasn't a good storyline. No. No. Because pretty much in that in that one, um, Superman pretty much rips Doomsday in half. Like they fight for like one page. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And Superman rips when him in you half. tune into the <laughs> Bundacast on Monday nights at eight o'clock, you're gonna hear me and Mr. J talking, and we are going to rip you in half with our words through the internet on the radio. Bundablog.com, download our podcast on iTunes if you want to hear it. Straighten your ears. Bundacast, tune in or die. And we're back. <laughs> now some final thoughts on Justice League. It was a good movie, George. Stop saying it wasn't a good. I didn't say it wasn't, it good. wasn't good. Yes, you did. Let me say some positive things. Because the fact don't just end it. Let me say some positive things. But the things. fact that you put eighty problems with it, it means that it's not that good. No, I still like it. It's just, it's a good movie. So what did you like? Not a great movie. So but what it's a did good you movie. like? Okay, the Flash was awesome. Okay. He had some funny jokes. You liked I said all that. the Flash components. Got that. Um, every Flash. Thing. I can't remember anything bad about the Flash. Okay. I like the way they he did the. Long time with Gordon. He has I like the way like he trail. did the running yeah, thing the with trail. the with the um with the lightning or whatever. Shooting lightning. The the speed for I like the speed force. Um, it was awesome that that scene with Superman where he's got all the Justice League and then he you see the little eye move and he follows Flash. Yeah, and then he true. trips up the Flash. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Um, Aquaman stuff. Aquaman being Aquaman, he could fly underwater. What? Crazy. Fly real good underwater. Um, Mera was awesome. <coughs> the team coming together was awesome. Batman telling Wonder Woman to lead the team was awesome. Alfred. Alfred was all right. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, Cyborg. Cyborg was pretty good, but um, I felt like. He could have he could have done more for like his personality. I thought he had enough. I thought he actually had like one of the biggest arcs in the movie, probably because like in the beginning he's just kind of like down and depressed, and then he's yeah, don't look at me and don't talk to me, you. and he's like booyah. That was the best part. He's like booyah, and he fist he fisted, <laughs> fisted bumped the Flash. Okay. Um. <coughs> The Wonder Woman saving the bank was cool. Uh, Sounds like you liked every part of this movie where there wasn't... Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf appeared in basically every movie. Probably. Actually, you know, I actually thought... So, like, this movie's weird because, like, the stuff that they took time on with the C... Like, you can tell the parts that were rushed because there was some great CGI. Like, the Speed Force was amazing. Mm -hmm. Cyborg, I was scared that he was going to look stupid, but Cyborg... Body looked amazing, mm -hmm. like he looked like real yeah, weight cool, to yeah. it. Um, like the, I thought the Parademons looked awesome, mm -hmm. way better than um, Steppenwolf. Um, mm -hmm. And even Steppenwolf looked pretty good, like from the back. But like when you see the close up of his face, like they didn't animate his face enough. <coughs> um, I love that they basically like ripped off Justice League War for the Batman intro of this movie. You know, with Batman, I, you know, hanging off a parademon's back, flying through Gotham City. Like, that moment, like, immediately reminded me of Batman and Robin, and when he's, like, surfing off of a... No, surf no, no, because that was terrible, Steve. Out of a plane and stuff. No, but I was thinking of, like, wow, how far we've come in, you know, 20 years, all right? Because that movie came out in, like, what, 98, right? 97. 97? Oh, 97? 2017? It is exactly 20 years. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, from 20 years ago, I saw Batman, George Clooney, 
ski surfing through the air, announcing that man, Ben Affleck, fucking riding a parademon through the Gotham skyline. Like, that shit looked amazing. Flash was really great. And it's really a high bar to live up to to be as good as the Grant TV Gustin. show Flash and Grant Gustin. And he was good. And I think it was a wise move for them to kind of, like, weaken him down and, like, really have him be, like, you know, the most, like, like a, like a... Newbie? Sm- yeah, noob version of the Flash possible. Like, I thought that was the most... I mean, we saw that on the TV show, too, like, when no, he first No, but I, th- I think out. that was useful for the story, and I think it was also useful for just, like, kind of setting him apart from Grant Gustin's Flash, because... He's so deep in, like, being the Flash now after four seasons that, like, you know, you expect him to throw, like, these, like, lightning punches and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like, you expect all these different, you know, tricks that he knows how to do. Like, the Flash didn't once in this movie, like, create a whirlwind with his hand and hold someone up or anything like that. Like, there's a lot more Flash tricks he's got to learn that we get to, we're going to get to enjoy. Wonder Woman, I enjoyed her stuff, but I think that she was a little underserved in the movie. Especially when she was, like, coming off of such a big win with her own movie. I wanted her to... Like, because when Batman puts her on the mission of, like, you gotta get Cyborg. Like, it doesn't really seem like she tries very hard. Like, she, like, sends him a couple, like, IMs and stuff. And then, like, you know. Well, but... Shit works out. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, uh, like, they explain it halfway through the movie when they're in the, like, the lake scene mm-hmm. and, like, oh, we're asking people, you know, that yeah, we don't to know die. to die. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. So I, she was kind of reluctant to it. Well, it's because she's... And by the end of the film, been... see, that's what I liked about this movie. That's the best part of this movie is the characters. I felt like every character had an arc. So was Wonder Woman's arc. You know, she's Wonder Woman's arc, was well, she's team. ready to be a leader and ready to, like, embrace the public and be like inspire the public because like in the beginning she just kind of shows up does her thing and then leaves that's not true. and like nobody really knows who wonder woman is that's not true. at the end that's not true. she's like talking to reporters and the little kids and stuff signing autographs yo i'm wonder woman i'm here Didn't to stay the no also it's at the end that she has the guy tied up with the with at the, the last end one. okay i thought yes. that was at the beginning for no reason. okay yeah, because okay. both scenes look similar yeah they do look because they look have the exact same lighting because the scene at the end yeah, takes yeah, place, yeah. like, at a museum. Yeah, in the same area. And the yeah, first yeah. one was at a bank, but they okay. both look the same. Okay. Yeah. So she has a character arc. You know, Batman has a character arc. Lois wh- Lane? Martha has an arc. Martha? Yeah. She's, like, so depressed. And she's happy. Her son's <laughs> back. Boom. <laughs> Full arc. No son to son. Some son. Um, Aquaman has an arc. Like, by the end of the movie, he's willing to accept his duties as the and king Batman of Atlanta. And has one of the best jokes at the end of the movie that references the Nolan Batman verse, where they're like, how did you how did you buy the house back? And he's like, well, I bought the bank. And then he's like, yeah, it's kind of a reflex thing. I <laughs> <laughs> that happened in the Nolan? Huh? Well, in the Nolan movies, you remember when he's in, like, the hotel? Oh, yeah, I bought the hotel. And he's like, I'll just buy the hotel. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that, 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 was, that was a Nolan... I'm gonna buy the hotel. That was a Nolan movie. And, and Nolan was the guy who was like, well, we need to manufacture this, like, one intricate thing to make the bat cowl. All right, we'll buy that entire company then. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, I, Cyborg I, had an arc. I was hoping for... Because Alfred was so good at the comedy in BVS DOJ, yeah, I was hoping that Alfred would have more to do on the team and would get more comedic moments and sort of get to be like a father figure for the team or something like that. Or, you know what I mean? Well, they Which seem to I, cut out like, a lot of stuff. Some stuff. They cut out him interacting with the team more because in the trailers you can see like he's either talking to Superman or something, and mm-hmm. and I'm sure he's talked to Wonder Woman, but like. I don't know. In the movie, they seem to cut out a lot of his scenes. Yeah. And the one... I like that at the end of the movie, they're going to you know, put a table, you know, and sort of have a hall Ooh, of six chairs. And stuff. And room for more. Know? But why would you build your hall of justice in Wayne Manor? In the band in Wayne Manor? Right? 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 I guess. Because what I thought was cool about Justice League was that they figured out, like, well, Justice League 
having a Hall of Justice like Super Friends is kind of lame. So we'll just do like, you know, the Watchtower, the Space Station in the Sky. That's cool. And then after three seasons, they figured out people, you know, miss the Hall of Justice. If we have a Hall of Justice on Earth as like an embassy so that people don't aren't so scared of the Justice League, that's a good idea. So thus, it makes sense to exist in the universe. I thought they should end with like Batman being like, this will be the site of the Hall of Justice and it's in the middle of no an Atropolis or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, to put it in the middle of nowhere, all that's going to happen is Legion, Legion of Doom is going to show up there and blow that damn building up again. I, I didn't mind them doing the Hall of Justice at the at the Wayne Manor. Let's talk about that post credit scene, boy. Post credit scene. So you claim that there was post credit scenes on previous films, previous DC films. Well, just like Suicide Squad had that little bit with Batman. Oh, with Batman meeting Waller, meeting Waller, and saying "shut it down," which which never could set it. up it could set up Suicide Squad versus Justice League. They did it in the comics. So that was the first post credit scene. Yeah, which was me. It was good. It was yeah, good. it was alright. But it wasn't like, yeah, you know, like what we got in this movie. Yeah, we like, got this is Deathstroke on a boat. A better ending. And we got Lex Luthor, <coughs> looking like he's supposed to look. Looking like he's supposed to look. And like some Gene Hackman. And I thought he acted, like, um, he acted more. His acting was a little bit more subdued. It wasn't so manic and crazy. Well, like BVS. He had a lot of craziness and tics, and he finally, you know, went to a mental institution and got some help. Yeah. So he worked through... Those problems. All of those father issues. Yeah. And now he's ready to be a productive member of society. Yeah. By taking out the Justice League. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm excited. What- and the rumors are that for, from now on, they're going to start putting more of these end credits, building up the Legion of Doom. I... I like that, but I don't want the end credits to be the only place they build. Like, you should be building Legion of Doom in the entire movie as well. No. Yeah. No. Let me tell you why. No. You, let no. me tell you why you don't do that. Because, let's say, okay. First of all, let me start off by saying, James Wan is awesome, and Aquaman is gonna be the best comic book movie of 2018, mother effers. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me start off by saying that. But this is why you don't. Do it because let's say Flashpoint sucks, and that movie you spend the whole movie building up the Legion of Doom. Then, like, when that movie doesn't work, it's gonna hurt other movies. So, what you do is you just put a little thing at the end where, like, at the end of the movie, Reverse Flash joins the Legion of Doom, and then in Aquaman, Black Manta joins the Legion of Doom. But that's not gonna make sense. Why not? If you don't introduce Reverse Flash in the movie. No, yeah, you introduce him in the movie. Okay, but that and then he make gets sense. His, he gets his ass okay, kicked. Okay, that makes sense. But let me explain. But the let way you explain. were saying it, but the way you were making it seem, is it, it was going to be like this movie, where we're not going to know anything about Deathstroke or see Deathstroke, and then he's just going to show up at the end and join the Legion of Doom. Like, the way you were presenting it was that I'm going to watch an entire Aquaman movie. No, no, no. Black Manta's going to be in the entire movie. Or he's going to get a piece of the movie. But let me, let me just say what I want to say. Black Manta's going to be in the entire movie... But he's going to get his ass kicked so bad by Aquaman yeah. that at the end of the movie, Lex Luthor, Deathstroke shows up. That's good. And like, hey, <coughs> come join our club. We're going to be stronger and we're going to kick all their asses. That's good. And Reverse Flash, he's going to be the bad guy in the entire Flashpoint movie. And then he gets his ass kicked. And then at the end, right, it's going to be like, yo, let's join up together. Kick their ass. And then, and then... Once you get a string of good movies going and more people more invested in the DCEU, then later on down the road, then you can do Justice League 2 versus Legion of Doom. I'm in. Lex Luthor, green power suit, armored robot. Whoa, that'd be crazy. Lex Luthor in a robot outfit, destroying the world. It's, is it Krypton powered? Kryptonite? Could be. could be. That way he could fight Superman. Could be. Otherwise, Superman just rip him apart. Maybe. Do we uh do we mention any of the news that happened this week? No, this has already gone this too is far. An, this is an hour already, dude. This is an hour? No, but that that this other stuff doesn't count. That that was cut out. That was four minutes. No, it, that was a long time. That was e- <laughs> a that, long time. That's stretching it too. That it was four minutes. 
but it was like around four minutes. Okay. We'll get to that. We'll get to the behind the scenes of... And the future of the DCEU? Who betrayed the, the league? <laughs> who betrayed the Justice League? Who was the real... Villain. Fucking... Villain. Master of Apocalypse in this bitch. I have been... I... Wait. I... What? We didn't even do, like... Uh, give it a score. No? A score? Yeah. Well, what? I guess we did. You gave it a... An A-? minus. Okay. I give it a B I gave it a grade. B minus. If you want me to give it a score, I'll give it a 8.5 out of 10, I guess. 8.5? I would say 7.5 7. out of 10. Right. Still, that's a good score. <laughs> okay. That's like a C. Okay, so, okay, wait. In the film, C plus. In the film hierarchy, all right? Yeah. You have to rate. Oh, we're going to rank the films? Let's do it. Man of Steel. Yes. BVS. Yes. Suicide. Yes. Wonder Woman, yes. Justice League. Yes. The best one is Wonder Woman. Well, we can agree on that. F yes. Right? Man of Steel is number two. No. You're crazy. You're crazy. Justice League number two. You're crazy. Chink. Crazy. Justice League number two. Justice League three. You're going Man of Steel two. Easily. Justice two. League three. I go BVS three. You're putting Man of Steel lower? Yeah, than BBS. I think it goes... I like BBS. I think it goes by tomato meter. I like some BBS. I think it goes by tomato meter. No. It goes Wonder Woman, no. Man of Steel, no. Justice League, no. BBS, Suicide Squad. That's how it goes. So you're saying you agree with Rotten Tomatoes and all things forever now? You're... I don't know. I don't no, agree. No, no, you betrayed. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't agree. You're the Rotten Tomatoes Wait, right now. wait, no, no. I don't agree with the score, but I agree with the ranking. With the ranking. I would put BBS at the third spot, Man of Steel in the fourth spot. You're crazy. Suicide Squad in that fifth spot. You're crazy. This is why Man of Steel goes number two. Out of all those movies, not Wonder excluding Wonder Woman, you got Justice League, BBS, Suicide Squad. Like Man of Steel had the most like Focus storyline, story. complete story, and the best villain okay. of the DCEU. Okay, that though that may be true, that may be true, but unfortunately, it's not a fun movie. It's not a good movie to it rewatch. It is fun. Like the only fun thing I like in Man of Steel that like I enjoy is like Michael Shannon freaking out as General Zod. Being like, I will find him. That was like, great. That's, that's great. You're awesome. That's the only thing. What about Dorel riding fucking dragons? That's fun, but that's and, two seconds. Which and 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 beating up. He beat up General Zod. All the fun things that happen in that movie happen in the first thirty minutes of the movie. No, and yeah. no, yeah. the fight with Feora that was good too, and fighting Nod. But it was not that, fun. It was fun. No, You're crazy. You, no, because I'm worried about When's Sears. the last time you watched I'm Man of Steel? I'm worried about Sears and IHOP. Poor IHOP. Why did IHOP got to take it so hard? When's the last time you watched Man of Steel? I never watch it. You see? Yeah. I'm telling you. Watch Man of Steel, BVS back-to-back. Man of Steel is a superior movie. Better villain. Clear. No. Focus. Direction. No. Movie. No. On this disagreement. <laughs> there... All right. You're putting Man of Steel way too low. You're crazy. So apparently, I belong in Arkham Asylum. Yes. And right next to the Joker. Mr. J belongs <laughs> in the Justice League. Yes. The world has gone mad. Justice League number three. Yeah. Just BBS four. Yeah. Suicide Squad five. So you can check out stuff we do at Vundablog, uh, com, www.vundablog.com. Tweet us. At Vundablog or at Vundacast. Uh, on Instagram, we are at Vundablog. And we also have uh, an Instagram for my dogs called at Duke Xena Life, where you can see my four dogs, Duke Xena, Rusty, and Morty. Whoa, Morty. Rick and Morty. Who are awesome. How do you rank the villains? What? Rank the villains. There's a lot of villains. I can't rank them. Rank them. What do you mean? There's, there's, not, there's only five movies. There's five villains. 
This or maybe six. Villains. Maybe six. There's not five villains. Maybe six. Suicide so Squad's chock full of villains. No, no, those guys, those they're, they're good guys. They're bad they guys. never do anything bad in they the movie. They said they were bad guys. But they never do anything bad. But they said they were bad guys. Uh, okay. This is why so, the extended cut is a little bit better because they actually show Harley Quinn doing bad stuff. Okay. Zod. Zod is number one. Zod is the best villain. Yeah. Just because you know where he's coming from. I will find you him! You know why he's pissed. You yes. know what he's going to do. He's gonna you know his motivations. He has up. motivations. He did. And, you can, and you can actually like sympathize with him. He, all he wants to do is bring back his brothers and sisters. He's the best villain. Okay. He's the greatest. Easily the best villain. And I think he's better than all the Marvel villains. Number two? Number dos. A very low number two, because, you know, everybody else is kind of, like, down there. <laughs> no, number two, I'm going to go Doomsday. Oh, You're crazy! Doomsday. You're crazy! No! Yeah. Lex Luthor. He was what he needed to be. Lex Luthor. He was a big spiky kill monster. He was cool. No. It has to be Lex Luthor. No. Lex Luthor created Doomsday. Doomsday? Lex Luthor. He outsmarted Batman and Superman. That's how good he is. Doomsday. That's how good he is. Then Ares. Then oh, Steppenwolf. you know what? Maybe I put Ares number two. Then Ares, then Enchantress. Then Steppenwolf, then Enchantress. Wait, you know what? Maybe I put Ares number two because that wasn't that genius. Like, he got, um, he started helping Wonder Woman, right? Because he wanted her to see how bad people were and that to it wasn't his fault. Yeah, yeah, and that it wasn't his fault. <laughs> and see, he actually had, like, clear motivations and, like, why he was doing it, like, it is true. Like, I can sympathize with him and I can agree with him. Yeah, humans suck. And we destroy the world. Maybe we should get taken out. Right? You actually okay. sympathize. I think Ares number two, actually. But there you go. Ares number two. Just a CGI creation that looks. No, he's an actual person. He's a CGI. See, this is why. But the way he's a villain in the movie. At it's the end. By being a big CGI monster. At the end, you mean? The real villains of this movie are the things that people punch in the face, okay? The Nazis? General Zod is a thing people punch in the face, okay? They, he gets Doomsday punched in the face. is a thing that gets punched in the face. Ares gets punched in the face. Ares as a CGI monster. So that CGI monster Ares... Is no, but you judging. see his face underneath the mask. Yeah, but he just has two horns coming out of his head, and frankly, his design looks a little similar to Steppenwolf because of the horn and the CGI. It was different. It was different. Listen. But it was similar. Like, this is where it sucks, because people complain in Wonder Woman that you can see David Thewlis in the mask instead of just being, like, the cartoon where you just see, like, glowing yeah. eyes and being cartoonish. They That's actually put, stupid. like, a face underneath. So it, I liked it because it made it look more realistic. Uh -huh. Maybe he does look a little goofy with the mustache underneath, but I liked it because it, was cool. it makes it look more realistic. Uh -huh. um, but then... Okay, so people complain. They're like, oh, no, I wish it was just all dark with glowing eyes or something. So, okay. So then in Justice League, they make them all CGI, and then people still complain. They're like, oh, they should have put a real actor. But when they put a real actor, they complain it should have been CGI. So it's like, yo, come on, guys. Like, pick. What do you want us to do? You know what I mean? Do you want us to make him full CGI or, make, or, or do a person? That's why I think Ares was better <coughs> because it was actually a real person. And real motivations, and it actually made sense. And then I would put Luther three. Um, even though he has motivations, but there's kind of unclear. It just seems like he's kind of jealous of Superman for being all powerful, and for like his daddy beating the shit out of him. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was awesome that he fucking outsmarted Batman and Superman. Then who's who's battling for last place? Seven more for Enchantress. Who gets last place? Wait, there's still, like, two more spots. There's okay, two more spots. But when you say who gets there's the last minutes. spot, then that says who gets the fourth spot. You make one decision and they're both answers. Okay. Um, so who's the worst? Worst, worst. The worst? Enchantress. And I liked her in the movie um, when she's, like, that dark golem type of creature. So I love that Zod? part. Ares. Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor. Yeah. Who is Steppenwolf. It? Steppenwolf. <laughs> See? He's so bad you don't even remember No, him. but I'm just like, you're putting Steppenwolf at four? Yes. And Enchantress at five. 
What? What's that? You couldn't even remember the guy's name. He's forgettable. He's so forgettable. He's so vanilla and bland. His face looks like vanilla. Like vanilla pudding. <laughs> but Enchantress was worse because... Okay, and she was super cool when they first introduced her with that hand-changing thing. And she's super dark and all weird and creepy. But then halfway through the movie, like, she's all clean and she becomes his goddess. And yeah, she becomes his belly dancing belly hippie. Dancer. Yeah. I and that's that's I'm not, where I'm not saying she don't suck. That's where she sucked. So we agreed. Actually, face Steppenwolf and Enchantress at Enchantress are the worst. But Enchantress was worse because I actually face palmed okay. at Enchantress. And Doomsday's the bomb, right after Zod. And Doomsday, whose Zod is just basically Doomsday again. I don't even great. count. I don't even no. count Doomsday. You should count Doomsday. <laughs> Doomsday doesn't count. Good job. He's just a thing to punch. I have been your host. <laughs> Steven. Steven. And with me as ever, a ma great many thanks to your king of DCFU. Whoa. The one and only, Mr. J. Later. Uh, remember, kids, when watching the Justice League, it helps if every time Superman comes on stream, you just rub a little Vaseline on your 3D glasses, <laughs> everything will look just right. Right? Whoa. Yay. Wundercast? Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name. <laughs>